Hello there everyone and welcome once again to the Train Aid HQ. My name is Nick and in today's video we are going to be looking at the teaching and learning cycle. So on behalf of Train Aid, welcome once again to today's video. And if you'd like some more information about how to get into teaching, um, we offer the level three award in education and training, the level four certificate, the level five diploma. But if you have any questions about a career within teaching or training, please get in contact with the team and we can give you lots of help and advice there. But let's jump into today's video. So as we know, we are going to be looking at the teaching and learning cycle. So what does this mean? What's it all about? So for any teacher, regardless of what sector that you teach in, if you're a teacher or trainer, the, the teaching and learning cycle is a systematic approach for you to plan effective uh, classes, uh, to plan effective teaching. And it essentially shows a start, a middle, and also an end point of your course or qualification that you are delivering on. In other words, if you follow this uh, this learning tool, you will deliver um, effective courses for your learners. And it's an opportunity to gain feedback from your learners and also stakeholders such as colleagues at every stage as well. As we can see, we have five stages here. We have stage one, which is identification of need. Stage two, which is planning and design. Stage three, which is delivery and facilitation. Stage four is assessment. And stage five, the final stage, is evaluation. As you can see, this is a continuous circle. So whenever you teach um, a course or qualification, you learn from that experience, ready for the next time that you teach. So therefore, this cycle is a fantastic way of you as a teacher or trainer developing your own self uh, through self-reflection as well. But let's have a look into the different stages. So stage one, first of all, this is the identifying needs stage. Now, there's a range of things that will happen at this stage. You will find out about your learners who you will teach, okay, on your course. This will also um, find out their motivations for the course, their previous qualifications, to see whether or not they're ready to embark on your course that you are teaching. We have initial and diagnostic assessments. You might um, agree individual learning plans with your, with your learners on your course or course goals. Um, you will identify the needs of the organization. You will identify the needs of you, the teacher or trainer. So you'll think about your own self and whether or not you're actually ready to teach this course. And you'll also identify the needs of the learners as well. So this stage is very important uh, with you thinking ahead to delivering your course. And let's have a look at this stage in some greater to detail. Okay, so at this stage, identifying needs, it's all about finding out about your about your learners. Uh, we can find out their previous learning experiences to date. Uh, we can find out um, their motivations for the course, their previous qualifications. And I think it's a great way to sit down with each learner in turn and just have a chat to them, have a discussion to ensure that they're on the correct uh, program of study. So things such as an interview stage, um, if learners complete perhaps an application form, you can see whether they're suitable for your course. And you can find out um, from them their goals, aspirations, once again, whether they've been put onto the course or whether they've chosen to come onto the course as well. And you can identify any learning um, individual requirements as well. So perhaps they have um, a learning need that you can cater for, that you can adapt perhaps your resources to support them, and they will be grateful, they will be thankful uh, for this initial uh, conversation as well. So finding out about the learners, I think, is is a fantastic way um, to, to get your course or qualification off to the right start. You can, of course, um, complete an initial or diagnostic assessment. So as we know, initial assessments, what teachers uh, use to find out um, a bit more about the learners that they 
are going to be teaching. So for example, giving learners a course application form, as we can see there, that's going to be really fantastic um, in order to gain more information um, about um, the, the learner and, and, and their journey so far. But there are many different initial diagnostic assessments um, that you can use, such as perhaps an interview or a discussion with the learner. Um, the learner could complete perhaps some self-assessment activities, there could be perhaps an icebreaker that that you uh, use as a part of your course. Um, there could be perhaps an observation. So you could perhaps observe a learner perform a skill before they come onto your course. OK, or it could be perhaps a learner audition as well. So any type of initial or diagnostic assessment is really going to be a fantastic way to see whether a learner is suitable for your course. Staying with identifying needs, we have to identify the needs of the organisation. And what we mean by this is that we need to find out about um, more information in regards to the organisation. So this could be perhaps target sets um, by the organisation. It could be how many learners need to be trained by a specific date. We need to perhaps have a look at perhaps teaching budgets. We need to look at the aim and the, the company vision as well. So it's all about finding out who needs to be trained um, and, and what date by, okay? The reasons for the training, all of these things are imperative, okay? It could be that uh, you have a new cohort of staff members and they need to be trained on a specific system by this date. So all things need to be considered here. And my my advice is to speak to perhaps a senior leadership team or or or, or managers okay to find out about the the bigger picture here the, the goals of the company um the aim the vision as i mentioned and this way you can you can see what targets that you um need to be provided by the the company as well so you need to find out about the the, the needs of the organization and who is going to be trained here as well very important we do that the next stage I think one of the most important stages is identifying your own needs as the teacher or trainer. So are you in fact qualified to teach your subject? I know that uh, teaching and training is a very exciting career and some teachers say, I would like to jump at the chance to teach on a course. However, you do need to ask the questions, are you prepared? Are you fully qualified in order to teach your subject? So you need to think about your own needs here. Are you confident? Are you competent enough to teach your, your course or qualification? You need to ask yourself, are your qualifications up to date? If not, you need to discuss these concerns with a perhaps a, a manager, and to maybe to attend a course to make sure that you're at a required level in order to teach the course, okay? So please do make sure that you're confident, you're, you're competent to teach this desired course or qualification. If not, then of course you'll need to attend some training here. OK, um, but once again, there are many keen teachers who say I can do this, I can do this, but they they need to gain this required qualification or training before they embark. So make sure that your your own needs are fulfilled and you can teach your course. OK, so that has really broken down stage one, the identification of needs. So of course, it's to do with your needs, your, your learner's needs and the needs of the organization. We're going to jump now onto stage two, this is the planning and design stage. So stage two is all about planning your course. It's about planning the course aim and the objectives. It's creating perhaps a scheme of work and lesson plans ready for your course and also to review the teaching environment. So I think these are three key areas which are going to, to put you in good stead um, when uh, designing your course. Okay, so let's have a look at this in more stages. Okay, so 
when planning your your own course you need to think about the aim so the big picture and also the objectives of the course okay now my advice is to review the the course specification so as you can see here this is a specification so it's it's a handbook provided by an awarding body and this provides you with lots of information such as the course guided learning hours assessment methods to be used um, what resources are going to be used as well and it also provides you with information about perhaps uh, UCAS points if you're teaching a, a higher level uh, qualification. It could be um, the, the, the booklet will contain information about progression routes as well. So the course specification is a fantastic way to find out more information about your course and breaks down how your course is going to be taught. So if you're teaching um, an accredited qualification, then please do look on an awarding body website. You can, of course, speak to perhaps an external verifier or an EV or a representative of the awarding body, and they'll be able to, to help provide you with lots of information on how your qualification is going to be taught. One of our courses is the level three award in education and training. And we have to use this specification here to find out more information and also to find out the updates of the course that we are teaching as well. So when planning and designing your, your own course, please do have a read through of any course handbook or specification first. Now, the next step is a scheme of work. Now, a scheme of work is a vital part of being a teacher or trainer. This is uh, a working document, as you can see here in the diagram. Um, it has a, a range of rows and it will show you the different uh, teaching dates, perhaps a start date, a middle date and also an end date as well. And it breaks your course down into sections. So you can see the assessment methods used. The, the course title, the learning goals, the outcomes, the assessment methods, any reminders for the teachers. And um, a scheme of work is a fantastic way that, that you can essentially keep on track with your teaching and training. Um, often the awarding body uh, will provide you with a scheme of work. If not, you can, of course, create one, perhaps on an Excel spreadsheet or a simple Word document like we have uh, just on our screen here. Now, it's a vital tool for, for teachers and trainers. They can see um, the different teaching methods that they are used within every class to make sure that their, their teaching has lots of variety to it as well. And it does give you a clear plan to see whether you're teaching is on track or whether you need to make any adaptations as well and of course to, to 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 go one step further we have lesson plans as well so obviously we have the specification which in my opinion is is the big goal we have the scheme of work which is the middle goal and then I think that the, 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 the lesson plans are your day to day tools that you use as a teacher or trainer to, to break down your, your qualification into stages. Now, as we can see, we have uh, the trainer activities, the lesson activities, the learner activities, and it breaks down your, your lesson into manageable sections. So, of course, you can keep on track as a teacher or trainer. You can remind yourself of uh, what activities um, you can use. Now, my advice is that you collaborate with fellow teachers or trainers, perhaps within your organization, to share lesson plans, okay? And that is good practice as well because it promotes standardization. You can, of course, award, uh, ask your awarding body for sample lesson plans as well uh, to gain some further information there. But especially when planning your course, it's advisable that you do use lesson plans, especially if you're a manager of your course, because if you're line managing staff members, then you can obviously give these uh, lesson plans and a scheme of work to your fellow teachers and that's going to help them with their own planning and delivery of their course. The next uh, key factor within the planning and designing stage of your course is to think about the teaching environment. So is the teaching and learning environment fit for purpose? Okay. Is it a safe and secure environment? Is it comfortable? Um, can all learners access the equipment? Is it accessible to all learners? 
are there enough resources for learners as well? So all of these questions um, do come up within the planning and design stage as well. So my advice is to perhaps visit uh, your, your classroom or teaching environment, perhaps do a risk assessment, have a look to ensure that all cables and wires and trip hazards are tucked away. Um, is there a cupboard to store resources? Um, is it safe in terms of the the environment itself? Is it comfortable? If the, the learning environment is comfortable, if it's uh, well ventilated, then of course, learners are going to feel more relaxed and feel more engaged as well. So do try to think about where you are teaching. And if you're sharing a teaching room, um, do um, really ask teachers and trainers to look after that environment as well. So to keep it tidy and of course, to ask learners to keep the, the environment tidy as well. But think about the teaching and learning environment. Is it safe and is it welcoming for your learners? Wow. Uh, so we've looked at stage one, identification of need. We've looked at planning and design. Now we're going to look at stage three, which is delivery and facilitation. So this is essentially getting on and delivering your subject. OK, so this is delivering your, your subject. Um, this is responding to learners questions. It is all about being in the classroom, seeing how you deliver your course. And it's 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 making changes um, to your lesson in the here and now. It's, it's all about developing rapport and respect with your learners using a, a varied uh, teaching and learning approaches and resources, trialing your teaching. So this, in my opinion, is the most exciting stage um, of the the teaching and learning cycle. This is where you're delivering your teaching and learning subject is about um having a, a, a pace to your lessons, uh, varying your pitch and tone as a teacher, and essentially using those uh, lesson plans and schemes of work that we have uh, talked about in the planning and designing stage and, and really getting on with your subject and giving it a go. Now let's have a look in your in, into this um, stage a little bit further. So delivery is where you are going to be teaching your subject specialism and facilitation is, is where you're going to be a facilitator. So facilitating activities such as paired work, group work as well. So the uh, for the activities that you host as a teacher, you're going to be facilitating them. You're going to be obviously seeing how they, how they work within the teaching and learning environment and making any adaptations to teaching methods so if things aren't working well or going to plan then do step in as a teacher and make those changes as well it's very important that we we do have a variety of teaching methods as well so this is where the scheme of work does come into play you can see the different uh, teaching styles or uh, resources and methods that you've used and it's good to have a variety of of uh, different resources and approaches because learners do have different learning styles and they're going to be thankful of a range of activities and interesting methods that you use. Now, at this stage, it's important to gain informal feedback on your teaching methods as well. So you can do this by asking learners, what did you think of the lesson today? Or you can use, of course, um, maybe paper-based uh, feedback forms there could be um, electronic data that you gain in um, any informal feedback that way so if you have a variety of lessons then it shows that you as a teacher you're gaining this valuable feedback ready to make a change for the next lesson as well okay and of course during this stage it's important to give formative feedback to learners this is uh, perhaps using questions open questions and this is giving learners feedback back to make sure that they're on track with their course as well. If we gave learners no feedback, they would be unsure about their course progress. They wouldn't know whether they're, they're on track for their final uh, summative assessment. So it's very important that we are giving lots of feedback, supportive, constructive, to say, well done, you're doing a fantastic job, or we need to make some changes, okay? And this way that you're helping learners to stay on track with their journey as well. 
Now, it's very important to review your scheme of work after every lesson to make sure that you're on track with your with your teaching. Are you on track? Are you teaching perhaps too quickly? Um, do you need to speed up your uh, your teaching? Do you need to slow it down? But delivery facilitation is all about the teaching in the here and now. OK, so do uh, deliver in your own teaching style. Perhaps you could even be observed by a colleague during this stage and get some feedback on your teaching. So do trial uh, your teaching and learning approaches. So it's the only way that you can develop as a teacher is, is stage three delivery and facilitation. OK. Wow. Um, so we're going to move on to stage four now. Um, stage four is assessment. Now, stage four is checking learners have gained um, the required subject knowledge, the skills in order to, to you know, to, um, to to be given perhaps a certificate at the end of their journey. OK, so um, at the end of um, the qualification, we have a stage called the summative uh, assessment stage. So this could be perhaps an observation. It could be an exam. Um, learners could hand in perhaps a portfolio of evidence. So every course, um, every qualification will have a final assessment stage. So you need to think about what um, what your your stage is going to have in terms of this final tool. OK, um, so obviously you need to be confident that learners have achieved their their full uh their full journey okay can learners replicate the skills and techniques um independently all of those questions are going to be asked during the assessment stage so we're going to to find out some more information here so um during the um, assessment stage, you will perhaps assess learners against um, the awarding body standards. So you need to be perhaps mindful. You need to read and interpret these standards pr from the awarding body um, specification. So you perhaps need to observe your learners. Perhaps you need to invigilate an exam. You perhaps need to perhaps have fellow staff members to be exam invigilators. You need to um, um, think about perhaps booking a room or resources for uh, this final assessment stage. Now, as a, an assessor, you need to be fair. You need to be um, you need to be objective. You could use the acronym VACSR. OK, so think about the feedback methods, OK, that you are going to be using and perhaps you can lean on other colleagues to be fellow assessors as well. If you're new to assessing, perhaps you could have um, perhaps a manager who observes you assessing a learner to, to ensure that you're assessing fairly and you're giving constructive feedback. Um, ultimately, you need to think about have learners passed your course, OK, are learners confident and confident? competent enough um, to be provided with a certificate or some type of record of achievement here. So as you um, as you are assessing your learners, once again, you need to be fair. Um, you need to be objective. Um, you need to um, make sure that you're um, well enough um, away for, for learners to perhaps um, demonstrate their skills without you intervening as an assessor. So that's very important. Um, after the assessment, you need to be clear about whether the learner has passed the assessment or whether perhaps a reassessment um, is going to be used and perhaps give them some targets, constructive feedback, perhaps another uh, assessment date. You need to actually um, inform learners when they will receive their results and also perhaps a certificate as well. Do they need to log on to perhaps um, a website or will they receive perhaps a certificate in the post? All of those things. So we need to be clear to our, to our learners about when uh, they are going to receive their results as well. But my advice, if you're new to assessing, um, perhaps um, give um, your managers um, a call to get some further advice, some help, some support with assessing. Now, with assessing, you need to make sure that learners are fully prepared for the assessment as well. Now, if you are 
uh, perhaps new to assessing, perhaps you could conduct some mock assessments to make sure that learners are ready. And you also need to teach learners the full criteria before they go into perhaps that exam room. Now, we don't want to catch learners out. We don't want to make learners feel uh, worried about assessments. They need to feel confident. And my advice, once again, is to share the perhaps awarding body standards with the learner beforehand um, discuss um, questions as well all of those things are key in preparing your learners for an assessment okay so we're just going to move on to stage number five this is the evaluation stage here excuse me um, so stage five is all about um obtaining feedback it's about obtaining feedback on your teaching methods obtaining feedback on course administration okay um and what i mean by that is um thinking about the the pre-course joining materials perhaps the reading list um were learners um happy with the course materials they received and also the the course assessment methods this is gaining feedback from perhaps learners about whether perhaps they enjoyed the assessment methods uh did they feel comfortable so it's, it's gaining uh formative feedback um from your learners and this is the final stage within our cycle so let's have a look um in greater detail so you will gain feedback from learners about the, the different initial and diagnostic assessments that they experienced at the beginning of the course, um, perhaps the administration, uh, was it clear, uh, any sort of course emails? So think about the pre-course uh, joining instructions, uh, was that clear? Um, did the course meet the the overall aims and objectives? Did the course come full circle? Did it meet the learners' needs? So when learners uh, leave the classroom um, at, at the end of the course, are they fully trained? Can they uh, replicate the skills that you demonstrate as well? So are they confident? And are you confident in their ability um, for for them to to replicate their skills, uh, you know, independently. Um, now think about other things such as learner satisfaction rates. Um, did learners enjoy the course? Uh, were they happy with the with the learning environment? And of course, you can gain valuable feedback on uh, teaching resources. Um, so feedback on assessment methods. Did learners enjoy the methods? Did they feel well prepared? Were the, 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 the assessment methods suitable for the learners actually on the course? Did it fit their learning style? Was it appropriate for them? So all of this information is incredibly valuable. And it's very important that do, learners do have a voice that they can give you uh, feedback as well. OK, so very important here that we, we do take on board feedback. Now, my advice is that you as a teacher or trainer, that you do give learners a method of providing feedback. Now, you can give them paper based learner feedback forms like this one here, or it could be electronic surveys as well. They could um, complete um, mobile phone um, surveys or questionnaires, and this uh, th this information uh, can be emailed uh, over to you or a system, and the results can be can be downloaded perhaps onto a spreadsheet as well. You may, of course, need to, to hold annual review meetings uh, with a senior leadership team or managers looking at this learner satisfaction rate as well, and also pass rates as well. So all of this data is incredibly important for reviews with managers because they'll be looking at feedback. And my advice if uh, you're providing learners with feedback forms, make sure it's anonymous because learners will feel quite protected there and they will be open able to open up more and give you lots of feedback as well objectively so if they feel that their name is on they might be worried about hurting your feelings as a teacher or trainer so anonymous feedback is important and do stress that as well now this is a very important stage um, because you can can listen to the learner voice you can listen to to fellow managers 
Okay, if they've observed you, they can give you a course feedback. You can listen to stakeholders, managers, the senior leadership team, and you're making a judgment here. You're making um, uh, developmental targets for you to improve on the next course or qualification that you deliver on. OK, so the evaluation stage is where you're going to be listening to your your own self as well. Now, as we can see, um, we are at stage five and the, the cycle is continuous. So it, it's incredibly uh, important that you that you learn from the evaluation stage ready for the next cycle, the identification of needs. OK, and you are going to prepare for your next course. So do. Um, discuss um, the course with colleagues and managers. How did it go? If it went, if it went not according to plan, that in in itself is a good thing because you can learn from those experiences. As long as you write down what went wrong, okay, how are you going to prepare for the next stage when you jump back into the, stage one, identification of needs. Um, to prepare for this, once again, as I mentioned, discuss um, the course with colleagues, managers, review learner, learner satisfaction rates, um, look back and review each step of the teaching and learning cycle as well. So during each stage, you can look back. And I, I would advise that if you keep a, a diary or a self-evaluation document, you can review each progress. So by keeping a log, a diary, a journal entry, you can see, you can look back at key dates, how you thought, how you, how you felt within that moment. And this is going to help you develop as a teacher or trainer. So development and reflection is absolutely crucial and it's the only way for us as teachers and trainers is to to improve okay so do listen to different points of view listen to your learners your colleagues managers key stakeholders about the course journey and that would be my advice to prepare you for your your next qualification or course Wow. Um, so that is the uh, the teaching and learning uh, cycle. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed this video and it's been uh, really helpful and informative. So once again, uh, thank you for watching. Please do like the video and subscribe um, to the, the YouTube channel. And as you can see here, we've got a range of dif different channels for you to reach out um, to, to, to ask us questions about our courses um, and please get in contact, whether it's with the office, um, drop us an email about our courses or pop onto our website as well. Uh, do subscribe to the channel to, to receive the latest videos from the team. Uh, but once again, thank you ever so much for watching. So my name's Nick here at TrainAid, and we hope to see you on one of our courses. Bye for now.